time for a sponsor. Oh, once again, I'm trying to pay my bills, so please be sure to check out the link in my description down below since YouTube no longer supports this channel because they're biased. But anyways, check out Car Marshall, link in my description down below if you're looking for a new or used car. Some viewers may find this disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hi, my loves! No, I'm kidding. That was annoying. But anyways, hi, my loves. It's Destin Choice, and you're watching Choice TV. Now, today's video... I want to talk about this whole nonsense involving the Breakfast Club. So I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys have heard about the whole Gucci Mane incident, the whole bullshit regarding Angela Yee, and basically Gucci Mane getting banned from the Breakfast Club over some nonsense. And I'm also going to be talking about why I don't fuck with the Breakfast Club, why I don't like them, and why I think it's legit trash. I'm drinking my mango sea moss smoothie. I got some honeycombs right here that I got from the farmer's market. And I got some California rolls. Mmm. Nice little healthy snack. But long story short, okay, so basically this is what happened. For those of you guys who haven't heard, Gucci basically ran to Instagram to tell everybody that he was banned from ever being on The Breakfast Club. This all started two years ago when Gucci Mane first got out of jail. When Gucci Mane first got out of jail, he didn't interview The Breakfast Club. And basically he let it be known that Angela tried to hit on him and she wants to know where his hotel was. Uh, <laughs> no, we was cool. I was not on your dick. Stop you didn't be texting me what hotel you was in. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah. Remember when we did that interview a long time ago with Melissa Ford and all that nigga uh -oh. was talking. Gucci got a good interview. Definitely, that definitely, that no, no, no. Service shit. Stop it. That definitely was not me. So Gucci Mane fast forward to today, posted that shit on his Instagram and said, damn. So apparently this is why I'm bad for the Breakfast Club. Now, I didn't know he was bad for the Breakfast Club. And when I saw that interview, I didn't think it was a big deal. I thought I took it as a joke. And she was even giggling too. But apparently she took it very seriously. If you guys didn't know, two years ago she ran to Twitter to clear her name. So was there ever anything like arguably romantic arguable, where he might have thought that it was romantic? I never even had his phone number. Like we've never, I've never texted him for any reason. I don't even have his number. So that's why I was like, it's impossible. It's absolutely impossible. Are you upset? Because people are now slut shaming you on social media. Some people think that you got caught. I mean, people believe what Gucci said. There, a lot of people are taking Gucci's side, and I, I don't. I'm, I'm surprised by that. I think Gucci has a history of saying things that aren't true on social media. We've all seen it before, so it is what it is. I think it's all gonna blow over. But I mean, at the end of the day, I know it's not true. All my friends know it's not true. He didn't pull up any evidence of anything that could be true. I just. You know, maybe he thought that happened. He's never even been on lift service. I've never interviewed him with Melissa Ford. So I don't see how that whole thing could even be possible. Fast forward to now, Gucci Mane just came out with his new album and he wants to go on the breakfast club to promote his album. So Angela didn't feel comfortable interviewing him unless he apologized publicly. So he got very upset and eventually Charlemagne decided to say, hey, fuck it, you know what? You don't want to interview him? And if you don't want to interview him, I'm going to interview him on my platform. Because in case you guys didn't know, Charlemagne is working on his new platform his own YouTube channel, because let's be real, y'all, Charlamagne the God is the Breakfast Club. When you think the Breakfast Club, you think Charlamagne the God. So, there was nothing wrong with the interview. It was a very good interview. But the reason why a lot of people, especially Angela Yee and DJ Envy, are very upset at Charlamagne and Gucci is because in that interview, towards the end, he had this to say. I rejected y'all. I don't want you. What you mad about? This shit wasn't even no big deal. I would never say nothing else about it. I never brought it up. But don't ever try to act like you didn't do it. You did. You did. She said she feel like you disrespected her. She disrespected herself. She disrespected herself. That's what she did. Nice, so he don't have no ID. Catch your ass out right here. <laughs> now let me, how did you end up losing your wallet? You had it in your pocket? You think somebody uh, took it? I don't know if somebody, no, nobody took it. Too, too many, too many people around me for somebody to take stuff from me. Maybe it was somebody around you. Nah, Damn. Can't nobody take <laughs> shit from me. Ain't nobody never took nothing from me. I just took life. something. You didn't even feel it. You can take it. Can, can, can you take it? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'm sure. You know what they say about little girls, especially Asian ones. Fat push. <laughs> Is that what they say? What they say? I was gonna say deep. Um <laughs> I'm sure. You know what they say about little girls, especially Asian ones. Fat push. <laughs> Is that what they say? What they say? I was gonna say deep. <laughs> I'm sure. 
You know what they say about little girls, especially Asian ones. Fat push. <laughs> Is that what they say? What they say? I was gonna say deep. She just made a big deal out of something. Went in a big deal. I don't. She disrespected herself. Now she embarrassed. And now whoever her dude is, he like, damn, you been a freak like that? You tell the dude, you want him to hit the bottom of that motherfucker? Deep? You want me to hit the bottom of that motherfucker? <laughs> What's wrong with you, man? That hoe want me to hit the bottom of that motherfucker, ain't it? That hoe said that shit deep. Uh, they about to be mad at 12 me. 12 foot they motherfucker, know. ain't it, man? <laughs> they gonna be mad at me. Bottomless pit, man. Man, God damn, that's just like me saying, hey, can you handle this big now? Oh, it's deep. Oh, is it, is it deep? What you think they gonna make a man do? What you, what you telling him that for? You tell the man your pussy deep for what? You just throwing it out there? So you do this all the, all your guests you talk to, you just say, hey, you know how the Asian girls are, right? They got fat pussy, deep pussy. That was People gonna see this and be like, he must be banned, because why they not in the, uh, man, <laughs> why he not in the studio? But for the record, he's not banned. I don't even know where that came from. It came from that punk ass bitch, man. And DJ Envy, he's a pussy too. Envy did it too? Envy's pussy, man. Pussy. He was scared, to, wasn't even scared to come. You know he's scared. Where he at? I didn't know he was supposed to be here. He wasn't going to come. He wasn't going to come because the day they did that people squirt thing and you wasn't there, mm -hmm. he was there. For those of you guys wondering why Gucci Mane is so upset, two weeks before this interview released, Angela Yee and DJ Envy went on the radio to clear her name when Gucci Mane put up that controversial post explaining why he was banned and this is what they said three weeks ago as we are taking gucci man and angela yee to court this morning breakfast club court that is now gucci man came up here before and said angela yee was on his thought of wit is Gucci Mane banned? Angela Yee, is Gucci Mane banned? Did you ban Gucci Mane? No, and I'll tell you, um, behind the scenes, what really happened mm. is a couple of days ago, somebody hit me up and said, Gucci Mane would like to get on the phone with you and have a conversation. And, you know, he wanted to, I guess, apologize right. for what he did. And I said, look, I don't do that behind the scenes, apologize, and in public, you don't. You said something publicly that wasn't true. You should publicly apologize. And... That's what happened. So he and called and said he wanted to apologize. And he you didn't said, call me, but oh. someone called me that represents him. Oh, and said he wanted to apologize. And you said, I ha yeah, you can apologize, but apologize in public like you went at me in public. Right. And I told you about that when it happened. Mm -hmm. I'm, at, I'm, I'm, I'm the judge. I don't know anything. Okay. Go ahead. Well, anyway, so that did happen a couple of days ago. And I actually have those text messages from said person, but mm. I'm not going to put them out there. Okay. So you and have now. Yes. So as far as the ban, I said, he's welcome to come on the show. I said, I'll be traveling a lot because I do have this lip service tour coming up and I'll be in Detroit next week and I'll be in Houston next week also. So I might not be there for it. And I also don't trust him. Like, I don't trust he might say something else on you again. So I don't know that I trust it. But tell him to come up there. I might not be there. And that might be better. Now, so Gucci Man is not banned. No, never banned him. And you have the receipts with that, the text messages. Yes. Okay. Now, Gucci Man said that he did lip service before with you and Melissa Ford. All right. So let's clear that up. Gucci Man was never on lip service. If you see that video, clip There's which by the way i do have that full interview at home so i uh, might put that out one day but anyway when you see the video clip it clearly says the morning after which is a morning show that i had on shade 45 on sirius lip service was a nighttime show and the other part of that is i was with melissa ford in atlantic and um in vegas for the iheart festival and she said i don't know why gucci man said that I was on lip service with you because I wasn't even there. I've never even met him. You know, and look, maybe he thought I texted him. I was looking at some of his old tweets. And when people say, why would Gucci Mane lie? Gucci Mane has had a history of lying. We have these old tweets where he talks about a lot of different women. And I'm not going to repeat them because it's very disrespectful. I'll repeat them. Give it to but me. But he talks about. That's part of the court. I have All to right, repeat them. All right, you want to see it? This, yes, this is uh, evidence A, B, and C. I have to repeat them. I have to let the people know because people don't know what you're talking about. What did he say? Can you pass me those tweets, please? Okay, and make sure you read the last tweet that uh, is on the last page now, this when is you all read alleged. all of these. No, they're not alleged. He really tweeted these. Oh, okay. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> and he did apologize for these tweets after he admitted that he lied. Okay, he says, me and Waka F Nicki Minaj. That's nothing. All right, then he said, F -G -Z tip Gotti. Uh, Waka Nicki Minaj. He says, uh, the last one or the last page, uh, Iggy want to suck my D. Uh, I had a threesome with Keisha and a white girl as Coach K in Orlando. Uh, Fantasia hit was good. Dro was taking Okay, it. this is this. Uh, who's lying? Angela or Gucci Man? Hello, who's this? What's your name? Uh, Tony. Hey, Tony, who's lying? Uh, Gucci Line. What? What this did make me realize was how important of a platform The Breakfast Club is. 
that somebody would be this upset that they would go on social media and try to be disrespectful yet again. Now, Gucci said he was because banned. Because they think they're banned from the Breakfast Club. Angela Yee said he's not banned. Gucci Mane said he did lip service before. Angela Yee said that is not true. He did a show called The Morning After. And right now we're in Breakfast Club Court. Who's lying, Gucci Mane or Angela Yee? Uh, Angela Yee, I love you to death. I love you. But I'm going to have to say you lying on this one, Angie. Why you say that? Right. She's telling him how deep the, the, the Asian vagina is. Right. That that was the one on lip service, uh, right? Uh, uh, it it might have been. I don't know. It actually Whoa, was not on. That was not lip service. That was a show called The Morning After. It says it on there, The Morning After, all across the screen. Yep, says it on the screen. So that is And that's the interview service. that he allegedly did with me and Melissa Ford. Melissa Ford was not there and never interviewed him. You got all her receipts this morning. I just want to see what he was going to say. Because he seemed like he had something he wanted to say to him. I don't think it's an issue. So I'm going to give him his, you know, I'm going to get him his face to face because mm-hmm. I ain't know me and him had no issue. But I do got an issue with him too. I got an issue with him now. I'm going to step to him. Yikes. I understand why he's upset, but he didn't have to call her no punk bitch. That was a little bit out of line. And y'all know how this world is. People slut shame women over the littlest things. And they even took calls, and that whole fucking her trying to clear her name over an Instagram post was fucking ridiculous. So long story short, they defended themselves after Gucci posted this Instagram post saying, damn, this is why I'm banned for the Breakfast Club. And they literally were taking in calls, people were kissing Angela's ass for some airtime, and only one person called Angela out. And her response was, he wasn't even on lip service, he was on a different show called so and so and so and so. Gucci don't even have his facts straight. Any woman or man that says to somebody, what's going on with their private parts is obviously flirting. I don't know, I wanna ask y'all opinion. Don't y'all genuinely think that Angela E was flirting? Now let me, how did you end up losing your wallet? You had it in your pocket, you think somebody yeah, took it? I don't know, somebody, no, nobody took it. My, too, too many, too many people around me for somebody to take something from me. Maybe it was somebody around you. Man, Damn. Listen, can't nobody take <laughs> shit from me. Ain't nobody never took nothing from me. I just took life. something, you didn't even feel it. Shit, you can take it. Can, can, can you take it? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I'm sure. You know what they say about little girls, especially Asian ones. Fat puss. <laughs> Is that what they say? You know what they say? I was going to say deep. Um, to me, this looks like flirting. Ooh. Mm. Too sweet. Oh my God, you can't eat this? That's ridiculous. So anywho, after that bullshit ass clap back and them trying to clear Angela Yee's name, Charlamagne wasn't there and that actually stood out to me. And the interview is now sitting at 3 million views. So you can see why a lot of people are blowing this up. And then she even unfollowed Charlamagne that got on Instagram. And then not only that, she even did like, she even ran to paparazzi and said, well, did you see how he looked in 2009? Text messages and 2009, you can say whatever, as long as you know nothing happened. Hey, I hear that. I think, I think people who know me know me well enough to know, like, I never was, no. Just Google what he looked like in 2009 and you'll see what I'm talking about. Well, not gonna lie, Angela, you weren't too cute your damn self in 2009. Shit, you ain't cute now, I'm just saying. Not trying to be rude or anything, I'm just saying, if we're coming for looks. What the? Now here's the problem. She claims Gucci Mane was gonna apologize, and that's why Gucci Mane didn't want to publicly apologize, because he saw it as a you're claiming I was gonna apologize because you heard from somebody, but that wasn't true, and I don't like how you're trying to punk me. So I think it's a pride thing with Gucci Mane, so I feel like he doesn't want to apologize due to his pride. Angela Yee, on the other hand, I don't know why the fuck she can't just admit that she was flirting with him. It's okay, Angela, you were flirting with him. But then again, Angela Yee does talk about sex. If you if you guys watch Angela Yee's podcast, because I do tune into her podcast, Lip Service. She's constantly talking about sex, pipe game. She even fucking gave two niggas pussy pockets on her damn podcast. Same thing. It's a pocket pussy. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Here your fuck I'm talking right. about. So you don't, yeah, right. So, so whatever, <laughs> babe, not around. But at the same time, I mean, come on. Now, like, you're talking about how your pussy is deep and, you know, they say about Asian girls. Like, I don't even know why Angelique has so much pride in herself that she doesn't even want to say that she was flirting with Gucci Mane. But you were. You were. And I want to know y'all honest opinion. Do y'all see this as flirting? So fast forward to now, if you guys watch the current interviews for Breakfast Club, because you guys know they post interviews every fucking day, the, the vibe is just awkward. If you notice, when they throughout their past three, four interviews, 
they've literally just been sitting there and not interacting. And if you do, and if you do to the Breakfast Club and you are familiar with their dynamic, you know that they're always joking around, laughing amongst one another, giving commentary about each other's questions. But here, it was just like none of them were talking to each other. They were only talking to the person that came in. It literally felt like how you treat your co-workers in Papa. So now that the house is voting, let's see what excuse they come up with to not cooperate this time. Because right. you know it's coming. Mm -hmm. All right, now a jury has avoided nearly coming into work today. You know, she ain't had no sleep. Just got off that, off of her uh, little trip. Mm -hmm. And DJ Wendy and Charlotte McGann, y'all would have called off for less. <laughs> y'all need to. This is what y'all need to. You know, I disrespect. Don't disrespect my work ethic now. Uh, you can disrespect a lot of things about me. Don't do that. Yeah, that's right. All talk, the time you spend away from my children. Talk about you know my hair. But don't talk about my work ethic. Yeah, talk about if he's a uh, hair plug. Talk about me skin bleaching. But don't talk about my work ethic now. <laughs> Hello, Jermaine. I understand why she's mad, and she has every right to be fucking pissed off. Because don't get me wrong. Let, think about it for a second. Let's say your cousin or your best friend is your coworker. And they basically go behind your back and interview someone that you don't like, or they work with somebody you don't like, or they hang out with someone that you don't like. And let's say that they disrespect you right in front of them. And here's my thing. If you're my friend and someone publicly disrespects me in front of you, or if someone disrespects me, whether it's public or not, and if you don't stick up for me, we are not friends. I'm saying, I'm just saying, if you don't stick up for me or say, hey, like, no, chill, or don't come for my friend like that, or chill on my friend, we are not fucking friends. So she has every right to be upset. But then again, it's also business. Charlamagne is a businessman. He did that interview. If I was in Charlamagne's position, would I have done that interview? For me, I would have did that shit anyways. But if it had been me and he would disrespect me, Angela Yee or my coworker or my best friend, I would have been like, oh, okay, whoa, 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 whoa. So Blade Devil's Advocate, Gucci, you did spread a narrative that this girl wants to come to your hotel room. So you kind of got to understand why she's upset. Like, at least hold him accountable. Like, he was literally just like, oh, damn. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like, he was letting Gucci Mane talk. And I'm just like, is your ass this desperate to make connections to the point where you're not going to call out somebody for disrespecting somebody you care about? What type of fuck shit is this? But then again, I already know what kind of person Charlamagne the God is. I don't like Charlamagne. I don't like Envy. I don't hate Yi. I don't dislike Yi. I do like her podcast, though. Lip service. But sometimes when it comes to Angela, I don't like the fact that she likes these two niggas talk over her and basically shit on her entire opinion. That's one thing that's always pissed me off, that Angela is... To me, she's just always been a weakling. And then Envy, I don't care for Envy ever since I found out that he wasn't playing Nicki Minaj's record because he was upset that she made fun of his friend. Like, he basically, in case you guys didn't know, Nicki, when she first released her album, Queen, DJ Self had a lot of criticism about it. And DJ Self is a, is a very popular DJ from New York. And he's a very popular producer. And he was also on Love & Hip Hop. And he was also one of the first people to ever sign Cardi B back when she was a stripper, back when her teeth were fucked up, and back when she was drugging and robbing man. So, long story short, DJ Self had a lot to say about Nicki Minaj's album. And Nicki Minaj literally dragged the fuck out of him on Twitter and said, Bitch, you try to ruin my career. I'm gonna have some niggas come and touch you. Don't fucking give your weak ass biased opinions on my work. DJ Envy was pissed as fuck about that. So he literally went on the radio and said, Don't come for my friend. Don't come for my best friend, my best friend. If his opinion is this and then all of a sudden you're gonna send somebody to come see him, nah. But I'm gonna have a conversation with Self today. Ooh. And cause I'm, I'm hoping Nikki didn't mean it that way. And, and knowing Nikki, I don't think she meant it that way. But if she meant it that way, you damn right. And every DJ on this station better stop playing. <laughs> You don't come at you don't come at you don't come at one of my own and talk about you gonna come see him because of his opinion. If it's something else, then yeah, I get it, but not his opinion. Nah, mm -mm, nah. All right. Mm -mm. Nikki, I got mad love for you. I want to tell you something. Really? I'm telling you in front of the world. DJ Envy is the only DJ blackballing you. Okay? Wait, play the beginning of that, that again because I feel like she said something Envy. Sounded like she shouted him out. Freestyle Envy. Nikki, Envy. <laughs> Nikki, I'm not even joking with you. Envy, say what you said off the air. I said, I God. thought I was the only one that, that didn't play her record. That's I right. Mean, I mean, I think every other DJ has played her record, but that's a, a whole bunch of extra bullshit. And he literally was like, that's why I don't play Nikki's record because she came from my friend. And I'm like, man, fuck this nigga DJ Envy. Like, you literally not playing Nikki's record just because she has something to say about your friend. What the fuck does that have to do with you? But then again, DJ Envy's probably someone that's all about loyalty and friendship. So I'm not even going to hold him to it. But anywho, so... 
I don't really care for DJ Envy because of that. And then I also don't care for Charlamagne because Charlamagne is like, he's legit a rapist. Like he's a, let me say alleged, he's, a, he, he's an alleged rapist. Like he literally admitted to fucking rape. And the reason why I don't like him was because I don't like the fact that he, he was in the R. Kelly documentary, but then has the nerve to admit to rape five years ago. Ariel Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. I got this girl real drunk. And, um, I fought, we Just fought. that sentence sounds a little fishy. I, I, I'm I not, got her drunk. I, now, I, I, I didn't just somewhere. get her drunk. I remember going, I, I went to the sex store and got Spanish Fly. Oh, so you raped her? Shut up. <laughs> Spanish Fly. Why in, they why sell it in the sex store. You, dog? I, I'm telling the truth. They, they spell it in the Spanish store. I had to fucking, I had to fucking spell it. They sell I mean, knives they sell it in the, the store, too. You could put that to a girl's throat yeah, and have sex, sex with her. That doesn't mean it's so, legal. So I put the Spanish Fly in the ENJ. We drinking the ENJ and shit. So in my mind, I don't know if this shit really worked, but I felt like I got horny as a motherfucker, too. <laughs> <laughs> so, she took a so, so she was drunk and shit and we had sex and shit and like a lot of my boys was trying to come in the room and fuck her. I'm like, nah, chill out. I can't. I'm not doing that. And I'm like, what? Yeah. You're on a train on it. That's rape. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> right? so if it's so, just one on one. It ain't right. Yeah. So the next <laughs> trains are right. So the next morning she wakes up. The next morning she wakes up and um, we talk about it. And she's like, what happened? Like we had sex. She said, okay, well, I'm glad it was you. Then a couple days later, she's like, yo, are you sure I only had sex with you? Because <laughs> one of my stupid ass cousins was going around saying he fucked her, which he didn't. I, okay. I know for a fact he didn't. Okay. I was dead the whole time. Yeah, yeah. He did not fuck her. Yeah. He looked at her naked, but he didn't fuck her, <laughs> right? So, 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 I'm telling her, no, me and you just had sex. Nobody else did nothing. So it just was weird that she was like, well, I'm just glad it was you. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. in my mind, I'm like, yeah, Yo, you could have been in a real bad situation if it was another That's a motherfucker. Huge compliment, there. man. A girl just said, "Yo, <laughs> at least you raped me." I didn't rape her. <laughs> I did not rape her. Said. I did not rape her. Hey, if it was any of your cousins or friends who have been raped, but I you didn't rape her because me and her had every intention of having sex with each other. So then, why would you put the Spanish fly? I was a freaky. I'm still a freaky motherfucker, but I was a really. I was. I've listen. My Wait, whole, was she passed out while you fucked her? Nah, she wasn't like. She was like one of those drunks where <laughs> no, listen, no, she was one of those drunks where like she was one of those drunks where she was like oh like co she wasn't coherent but she was up you know when your girls is like when you're blacked out like that don't know what the fuck's going on type shit like she was really she was and then people like try to come for me it was like choice that was so long ago he was probably playing well this don't sound like playing to me hmm. So when it comes to Charlamagne, I didn't like that, and that pissed me the fuck off. That he got a slap on the wrist for that. Because last time I checked, I don't know anyone who jokes around about raping somebody and putting Spanish fly in their drink, which is a drug. Anywho, I didn't like the fact that he admitted to rape five, six years ago in a podcast, and they had the nerve to pop in the arcade documentary. So when I saw him in the arcade documentary, I was like, well, damn, bitch, fancy seeing you here. Alleged rapist. So that shit pissed me the fuck off. Ooh, spicy. I don't even. I like. I don't like Charlamagne the God even more because I don't like the fact that he came for Amara the Negra. Cause you guys didn't know a couple years ago, about two years ago, he did an interview with Amara the Negra. Amara the Negra is an Afro Latina from Miami, and basically she came on to promote her herself on Love and Hip Hop. And she was literally talking about how she doesn't get any representation in the Latin media because the Latin media literally hates her. And then the American media is taking people a hard time to adjust to her. And she feels like her dark skin plays a role. And Marlon Negra basically said, if I was a lighter skinned Latina, like J-Lo or Shakira, I'd probably be a lot further in my singing career and in my acting career. Your hair needs to be straight and silky in order to be pretty. Or if you're Latina, you have to look like J-Lo, Sofia Vergara, Shakira. But when you look like me, oh, you are you don't look Latina enough. What does that even mean? There isn't a Latin country that doesn't have people that look like myself. So why aren't we on magazine? Why aren't we on movies? Why aren't we? So it bothers me. I thought you were black until I heard you speak. For, 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 to simplify it, for See, what exactly is the struggle that you're facing? What is the struggle? The struggle? Always pick the ones that look like I said before, like J-Lo's and Shakira's and stuff before they look at us. Who cares if you're talented? Who cares if you're educated? It's just, so it's crazy, just a symbol dude, of beauty. I don't, I don't see that. Like, right yes. Now. And I'm, I guess I'm uptown a lot. I mean, Latin market okay. into the American. Mm -hmm. And this is the struggles that we have. 
Right, you can say you don't. Right, you can say you don't. Right, you can say you don't. You can say you don't. You can say you don't. The concept is not the same. So you think it's the dark skin? It's a ray. How do you explain SZA? How do you explain? But she's talking about the Latin market. And Charlamagne the God had the nerve to tell this woman, this black woman. Well, what about SZA? Well, what about Issa Rae? I don't respect anyone who tells a dark-skinned black woman that her colorism issues are in her head. Like, what? That was absolutely trash. And he didn't even apologize for it. But anyways, I don't fuck with Sean because of that. He's trash. And plus, there was the incident where literally Cardi B had a video that went viral a couple months ago. And basically, she said in order to, for her to get a good amount of studio time, she used to drug and rob men. And when the Breakfast Club covered it, they were so fucking biased. They didn't even hold her accountable. They'll hold everybody accountable except for Cardi B because Cardi B is the one that's on their fuck. Is they're on Cardi B's payroll. I said what I said. But I also hated the fact that they they didn't hold her accountable when she called a dark skinned woman a burnt roach. The roach I don't have problems. I don't think roach is a slur towards towards black women. I don't think it's not. It's not. Roach can mean anything. It can mean a slimy, sneaky, evil person. But she called a woman a burnt roach. But anyways, I didn't like that. And I hate that the Breakfast Club was like, who cares? It's not that serious. I don't know why people don't want to let people grow. And the Breakfast Club is honestly just a dangerous platform. I feel like people like that have way too much fucking power and way too much fucking influence. So I don't fuck with the Breakfast Club, but I'm not going to give it up. I know some of y'all gonna say, well, why do you still tune into the interviews? Bitch, they have some of the best guests ever. If they have someone that I, I, I like being interviewed, I'm gonna tune in. But I don't like Charlemagne, don't like Envy. But anyways, I feel like Ye has a reason to be upset. But at the same time, how can she go do press runs saying, you don't talk to a woman like that. You don't talk to a woman like that. Why would you say that about a woman? It's adult to know that you can discuss sex and conversations and that doesn't mean that someone likes you. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like me and you could have a conversation like we just were, mm -hmm. yeah, off right, camera, right. where we're talking about sex and things like that, and you're not like, yeah, Angela's trying to holler at me. That's mm -hmm. not what that means, so. So know. pretty much what happened, you think there was a conversation had that, uh, had that Gucci man took the wrong way? Yeah, and I think he must have been thinking about it for 10 years. I don't know. <laughs> the whole interview, obviously Charlamagne sat down with him. A lot of people are saying that you all, there's some like unsaid beef between you all because he did conduct that interview with Gucci. Is that true? Any truth to that? Would you do that? If it, it was you and Quicksilver, you guys, would you do that? There would be a discussion first. Was yes. there even a discussion? Um, no, but I knew he was doing the interview. I just think that um, in general, if you work with somebody and someone's saying things like... Negative things. Nasty, like, things you can't even say on the radio right. in a really derogatory way, whether or not you work with that person, you know, talking about a woman in that way, because I have never called anybody out of their name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's the real issue. Like, you mm -hmm. can't just sit there and laugh when something like that happens. Oh, really? Angela Yee? Now you're going to pull the fucking women card? I hate when women do that. Stop pulling the woman card. When I hate when people say they want equality, but then pull the woman card. Like, how do you want equality amongst men and women but pull the woman card? I'm just saying. That is how I feel. But anyways, I also saw it as a, you're going to say in an interview, oh, why are you coming for a woman like that? That's a whole woman. Or oh, I'm a woman. Charlamagne should have stuck up for me. But what about when those niggas, but what about when that nigga, um, what's his name? Mayno and that other nigga was dragging K. Michelle and saying that they would fuck K. Michelle and saying that K. Michelle was this and all types of hoes. And you were encouraging that shit. Like she literally sat there giggling. And then when K. Michelle caught her ass out, she was literally sitting up here like, Get me <laughs> yeah, you did. Hold on, you did say something about K. Michelle. Oh. Whoa! She got that stink. I call oh. it the K. Michelle. <laughs> oh. Why would you say that? 
Yes. I mean, sometimes I just speak what's on my mind. Oh. I said that a couple times already, though, bro. Like, I, I was like, why, I did it say, up. I did you say, why would you up. say that? You brought it up. You sat there and chuckled. You did that. And you don't know what that might have done to me. If I wasn't a that was drinking her drink, cashing her checks, out the it might would have fucked up my whole mother day. My thing with you is the fact that you are friends and f Oh, okay. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, it's not that serious. And then when she did an interview with The Real, she was like, I just let crazy be crazy. And just like, what? Like, how you pull a woman card, but you can't even stick up for another woman who's being slut shamed and dragged into some random conversation? But, you know, sometimes you just... My whole thing is this. And this is how I am in real life. Mm -hmm. If you start talking to me crazy, I'm not engaging in that. I'm just not saying anything. And I was just like. And she was, and she handled it so good. And it was like, cool. she just let her go. And she was just like, okay. Yeah, you right, better girl. than me. Yep. And it diffused the situation. I know what happened. <laughs> let crazy look crazy. Right. So she ain't shit for that. So Angela, you cool, but you ain't shit for that. And you're a whole fucking hypocrite. But as far as the whole Gucci situation, him wanting to slap Envy, I guess I feel like it's justified because he was very one-sided with sticking up for Angela. It's okay to have Angela's back, but it's another thing to be so fucking one-sided about some bullshit that had nothing to do with dragging your brand. Like, the only reason Gucci doesn't fuck with Envy is because he had to sit up here and say, yup, Gucci's a liar. Yup, Gucci was wrong. Yo, oh, well, Gucci doesn't remember that, they, that that's not the show. Oh, they weren't on that show. They were actually on this show. So Gucci's memory is a little bit fuzzy. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Choked on the rice. What the fuck does that have to do with anything? What does what does him naming the wrong show have to do with the fact that she was flirting with him? Why can't she admit it? She's so prideful in her image that she can't even admit that she was flirting with him. Just straight up say, yeah, I was being flirtatious. Yeah, I was talking about sex. It is what it is. Why is she so prideful in herself with that? Why can't she put her side to the side and say, yeah, I don't give a fuck. She took that shit way too seriously. But then again, I understand why she's upset. Because you have to understand, he's spreading a narrative that she's the type of woman to want to slide in somebody's DMs and say, oh, where your hotel room at? Like, he's spreading a narrative about her. And he should have cleared that up. He, Gucci claims that he's not lying. So he's not going to clear it up. But at the same time, it's like really... Like, if you're not going to drop receipts, the least you could have did was not even bring that up. Or you should have at least been like, I should have been more professional, I bring it up. So it's just like, come on now. But then again, Angela, you ain't innocent either. So, I think Charlamagne is wrong for this. I think DJ Envy's wrong. I think Angela Yee is wrong. I think Gucci's wrong. Everybody plays all wrong in this. And Angela Yee needs to be held accountable. Charmaine be held accountable. Because I don't see how you can let someone sit up here and disrespect your co-worker. Because not only are they co-workers, they're actual friends in real life. They hang out in real life. How do you let someone talk crazy about your co-worker like that? Like, I understand Charlemagne has a job to do. And Charlemagne even responded recently. I didn't even see this interview. Somebody ended up reposting it. And he said this. If that was any other interviewer in that interview it wouldn't be an issue but being that me to, angela yeah. and envy work together you're supposed it, to protect them or something I, like that. yeah I, I don't know where i don't know where people get that from though that i'm supposed to protect them like he's an artist he had an opinion on something that they did like you know they went on breakfast club they did 20 minutes of breakfast club court they said things about gucci they said things about gucci's wife you mm -hmm. know or, or played things that rappers said about gucci's wife gucci had felt the way about that that's that. Like, I don't think it's that big of a deal for anybody to be tripping saying, you know, like, oh, well, Charlamagne shouldn't have done that. Like, no, I am an interviewer. I am a, a personality, a media personality. My job is to be as biased as possible, which is very hard to do. Unbiased. Unbiased yeah, yeah, as yeah, possible. Yeah. Well, maybe I did say it right the first time. God knows what he's doing. <laughs> <I'm just playing>. <laughs> but <laughs> and I'm like... Bitch, so you're not even going to hold or take kind of belief for the fact that you let a fucking grown-ass man who's banned from the show talk ill on your co-host slash friend? Like, what sense does that make? But I already knew what kind of person Charlamagne the God was. Not very fancy on him. And at the end of the day, <clears throat> this is the beginning of the end. <laughs> and I wouldn't be surprised of Angela Yee or DJ Envy leave Breakfast Club. I wouldn't be surprised if Charlamagne left. And honestly, 
Charlemagne is the Breakfast Club. When you think of the Breakfast Club, you think Charlemagne the God. And about him, the show is literally nothing. He's a big reason why most interviews go viral because he's so good at asking provoking questions. So he's honestly good on his own platform. He's already made a name for himself. So he doesn't even really need the Breakfast Club in the first place. He's also doing things on his own YouTube channel. Angelie has her own YouTube channel. They don't need the Breakfast Club. And honestly, <clears throat> they're really, really long overdue. I think if anything, Angela should have been like, I don't like what you did. Can you give me a public apology behind the scenes? But instead, you know, she was kind of running to the media, running to Twitter, saying, oh, that's not true. His memory is fuzzy. Remember, he does lean to... I think had she spoke to him behind the scenes and explained to her, him how he, how she felt in that moment and how that made her look, maybe Gucci would have been like, all right, you know what, you're right, I apologize. Because he apologized to Nikki, but then again, you know, Gucci is known for being a liar. He is known for speaking ill on women. He claimed he got head from Fantasia. He claimed he fucked Amber Rose. He claimed he had a threesome <coughs> with Nicki Minaj. He claimed he fucked Nicki Minaj or Waka Flocka. He claimed Nicki was a hoe living in Atlanta. Like, he made so many detriment... Def defamation claims. He did a lot of career assassination. A lot of people have believed him in the past because he's a male and because he's Gucci. So I find it funny and I'm annoyed that Angelique is so obsessed with that one or two detail. Oh, Gucci's referencing the wrong show. Gucci's referencing the wrong show. But you can't even address. Ooh. But you can't even address what she said in that interview. And she claims, I got the full clip, I'm going to release it, but I think I'm going to spare him. And I'm like, bitch, who cares? Footage doesn't lie. People do. She needs to put aside her pride and stand by what she says. You said you had a deep sideways vagina. You were flirting with him. You were like, oh, I just took something from your pocket. You didn't even realize it. But I think that's just how... Angela is and some people have a personality where they're just flirtatious without even realizing it like it happens I've met many people who are very flirtatious towards other people but don't even realize they're doing some people are very touchy some people are very like affectionate towards friends like it happens I'm not surprised that's her personality she talks about sex all the fucking time on her own platform but she used to be a big girl and grow the fuck up and be like yeah I said it yeah um, I was flirting with him I was joking haha -ha, who cares it's not that serious as far as me wanting to go to his hotel room yeah, that's not true. And Gucci Mane ain't shit for saying that. But then again, she could have easily said to him, I need you to publicly apologize to me rather than say, oh, somebody told me that he was going to apologize. Or, oh, I ran to Twitter to let everyone know that he does lean and his memory is fuzzy. I think Angela just let the comments get to her. And that's her. that was her main downfall. As far as Gucci, Gucci has way too much fucking pride. He could have just simply been like, all right, you know what? I apologize. That has nothing to do with nobody. Even though, even though I know I'm not lying and you did try to fuck, I, I have to go around and say that. But then again, it still would have ended wrong either way because Gucci claimed he's not lying and Angela claimed she's not lying. And Charlemagne, I don't blame him for doing the interview. I just think that he's a fucking fake ass person. And I'm not even surprised. He's fake. He's biased in a lot of situations. Envy, you better duck, bitch. Because Gucci gonna come he gonna get you. This is the beginning and the end. Breakfast Club is not going to last another year. I said what I said. It's fucked up because throughout all Charlotte made the God scandals, Envy and Angela Yee have always stood by him. When, when it came to the rape allegations, they sat right by him and helped him address the allegations. Obviously that was some bullshit. But they stood by him, and they helped him address it, called in his wife and everything. But Charlemagne can't even reciprocate the same loyalty because he's so upset of his own platform. <clears throat> That's how I view it. That's how I flip it. They're grown as fuck. These niggas are damn near middle-aged. And doing this shit. I really wish they would address it publicly and have a public talk. But knowing Charlemagne's pride, probably not gonna happen. Knowing Angela's pride, probably not gonna happen. I'm gonna give y'all a quick disclaimer. I'm gonna be starting I'm gonna start posting every day. Because I'm not doing shit. But I think it's only right. 
and I post every day. I'm gonna post every day on this channel or on my main channel. I'm gonna post one on this channel, one on the other channel. I'm gonna take turns. So please subscribe to my second channel. And all that. I would really appreciate it. Because I'm not doing shit. And all the time I don't post consistently. So let me have fucking ideas. A lot of y'all like, do another docu. Let me just take fucking time, my nigga. Let me just take like at least a week. Posting daily. I did it I did it a couple weeks ago. And it really worked out. Money so much money. YouTube keep demonetizing my shit. So yeah. Let me know if y'all enjoyed this video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Hmm. Shit good. Yeah, that's that. Mm. Twist out this bitch. Oh, why that top? You all right there. See, I heard it all before. Heard it all before. Life and the fun I will deserve. Running through the person that I do. Playing with her feelings. I'm the better man to go. Yeah, all before. All before. Unrealized, all your sweet talk, baby this, baby that. See, I'm hot and hot now. I'm hot and hot now. I'm hot to cut you down. I had to shut you down. Ooh, heard it all before. Ooh, I was your fool. I believed in you. Yes, I did. Yes, I did.